Overnight passage from St. Thomas to St. Martin. Let's go. Just arriving back into the Virgin Islands. Uh, we'll stop in St. John, it's a little bit closer. Uh, it was fine. We had to sail out to St. Martin and back, so 100 miles, 110 miles there from St. Thomas, and it'll be about 100 miles back to St. John. We just stayed about five hours. Uh, we had a problem with our check in in the US, so we had to leave the country and check back in. To have the right visa status. Uh, unfortunate, but couldn't really be avoided. So if the VBIs were closed, we would have been able to sail just uh, three miles or something to check in and check out there, but their borders are closed. So instead it was a couple hundred miles. Uh, good practice to do uh, two overnights in a row. Definitely makes me a little bit nervous for when we have to actually do a longer passage with just the two of us. It's not that easy getting out of bed uh, over and over through the night and cooking and taking care of kids when you're not on watch. Uh, I think I have to toughen up and perhaps start doing watches there a little bit longer um, so that we can both sleep a little bit longer. Um, we've, we're just staying up about two and a half, three hours each. But I think if we could switch that to four plus hours for each watch, um, it would make the sleep a little bit better and the waking up less frequent. So perhaps we get a little more quality sleep. Kids were awesome. Uh, so nice being with kid boats, but so nice to have them away from the boats for a little bit and just have them all to ourselves and they can have some bro time. They get along so well when it's just the two of them. They're super, super sweet. It's really nice to watch them. Uh, we also had to order uh, replacement batteries. Our house batteries are finished, gone. So we've coughed up the cash and we're switching to lithium. So the last few weeks have been very busy for Brad designing the house system, uh, reviewing it with an electrical engineer, and ordering all of the parts and accessories to go along with the system. So that's gonna roll in. We've also ordered dive gear. So we'll have our own setups. Uh, we have a dive compressor coming. And we also ordered the components that we hope will allow to make us a homemade soda stream. Cool. Yeah, so we have a big package coming in, uh, maybe later this week. Uh, we'll have to deal with custom clearance and all that, get it put away, blah, blah, blah. So always something. That's it. We're going to pull into the uh, Virgin Islands here shortly, enjoy some fresh bagels and uh, get our visas done right this time. After enjoying the remoteness of the Virgin Islands during the lockdown, we enjoyed the civilization and some normalcy by playing sports, staying in a hotel, and we even counted for the census. Eventually, the packages started arriving, some boat needs and some boat wants, some saved up allowance purchases, and just about everything in between. The most important delivery by far was the new batteries.
direction. Uh, so as you can see, our boat is a little messy here. We've been uh, four days at this to be able to create what we call the box, or we could refer to as the power box. A um, couple years in design for this, uh, but just breaking down the individual components here one by one just to go through what we've come up with. It looks like a lot, but actually when you uh, go through the different system elements of it, there's just a lot of fuses in this. We've got the main power from lithium batteries that are being installed right here, coming to your first terminal block. We pass through a 400 amp T fuse, and then we go to a battery shut off so we can kind of shut off the house and everything else. Uh, independent of the lithium bank right here. So we have 800 amp hours of lithium. You can put out about 400 amps at once. A huge amount of power coming through here, so you do want to be able to control that, shutting it off. Next, um, BEP makes a BEP Pro makes a really nice product where you can have one power bar across to be able to tie in multiples. Uh, otherwise, you would be stringing together four wires from each one. Um, so it creates it a lot more compact. So bre breaking this down even further, uh, we'll start with solar here. Uh, solar, we're controlling, we have terminals coming in for solar, a red and, or a positive and negative. Uh, we'll go through uh, battery protect here. And for the battery protect, they'll go through into, through a fuse, into our lithium battery bank. And the reason you want a battery protect on your solar is overcharge. So if the lithiums are full at 14.2 volts, uh, this will shut off the power from your uh, solar from your solar panels through to your battery bank. Um, now the opposite holds true that if we are running our alternators, that we want to have a protection to our battery bank, the lithium bank, to make sure we don't overcharge our batteries. Um, so on that side of it, we have set up a capacitor, which is an AGM, it'll show you shortly here. And through the AGM, we have a shut off switch, and then it goes through a fuse to a Cirix LICT. And that Cirix, uh, through the battery management system, will shut off the power once the um, power is full of the lithium battery bank. So it'll go through to another fuse and then it's into your main series. And then the next one we have is a house draw. Um, so when we are pulling uh, power through this system going into all your DC components, um, what we want to do is have a shut off that if the battery gets low, that this battery protect here will be able to shut off the uh, the DC, so uh, we don't kill our lithium batteries. So when you look at a lithium bank, you have to look at the charging side as well as the output side, the load side that's taking um, load out of your Victron system. So the key to this whole system is your BMS here. So your uh, load disconnect and charge disconnects that are on this system right here will connect through to your multi through an RJ45. And your multi will be able to uh, tell it uh, what to do with the system based on the voltage that you set. So you'll set parameters within uh, the multi uh, to be able to control this whole system here. So. Next step is to uh, install this. Um, so we're going to put this in. Uh, we'll connect the batteries last, but we have the other things connected in here. We'll get the, we'll get the new two watt cable connected for the multi. Um, we'll get a new DC coming into here and with the new negative on the other side and we will get the battery, the AGM battery uh, pretty much connected. And then the next step, we can shut this off we can connect all the lithium, and then it's a final check, uh, hard hats on, before we turn the switch. So this is uh, one problem here when you're working on a boat. You never know when it might rain. This is slowing down our production today. 
Only slightly. Still have my COVID mask on. We're in St. Thomas. The sun is shining. It is 8.30 in the morning. My other workers are not here yet, um, but hopefully they will be coming. Uh, just showing you right now how clean it is out here and an absolute mess inside with everything going on. Uh, came to the boat this morning and uh, the generator was running, so it kicked on automatically. Um, but when I was working on the, um, the multi, I had turned it off. So there's all these little things that you have to remember with power on a boat, when you turn your multi off, um, and your generator turns on when you have a 230 volt generator, that power runs through your multi and then charges your batteries. So battery went low, generator went on, but my batteries were not being charged because my multi switch is off. So battery last night went down to like 10.2. The fridge has obviously had trouble keeping up because there was a pool of water in front of our fridge. Um, so meaning in the middle of the night, it didn't have enough power. So it probably shut off and tried the cycle on and off, but it couldn't because the batteries could not hold it. So these are all little things um, and a battery bank that you have to be so careful of. And I feel AGM batteries without the proper monitoring system in place um, and you keep adding to the battery bank. It's just so hard uh, to be able to keep it above 55% all the time. Um, especially when you have smaller banks, um, that it becomes even more crucial. So if you can get in a cycle all the time of what you're doing, uh, it's fine. But uh, when you add kids and you add uh, different devices and Xboxes and things like that on a boat, um, it is uh, almost impossible. Um, at least uh, I've had it, find it really tough. So thankfully we are going to this lithium bank and uh, here we go. Another day in paradise. What did we just do, guys? So we just hooked up the, um, the two Victron units here to a, a start battery, AGM start battery, to program. Uh, so now we're just taking the cables off. And, uh, it's a little tricky here, too, because uh, you really want to be careful doing something like this on these units. The positive and negative posts are very close together. So it's fairly important you remove the positive off the battery so you cannot have a complete circuit and dead short that across uh, that would just ruin this whole project right away so I mean, even as we're getting close to the finish line you got to be really really careful and uh, still keep that uh, safety mindset here so we don't undo three days worth of work in a half a second to win this we have to have both engines going really Many days, but especially during projects like this, we see the beauty in the boating community. So many cruisers are willing to share knowledge, tools, and time to get jobs completed. We are most appreciative of Glenn and Brandon for all the time they spent helping Brad with the install. So this whole setup seems to probably weigh about 20 pounds, three quarter inch plug. Made from a pallet. Made from a pallet. Pine. Uh, Rust-oleum treated pine. So typically you would have this stuff mounted on a wall somewhere, but as you can see in my engine room on an FP, there is zero space to be able to put stuff anywhere. So even trying to find a couple blocks of space to put something is really hard. Day five, we're getting close here. So putting on a final connection, uh, have been really, really careful. I started off with the negatives first, one at a time, putting the boots on, connecting to the negative terminal. Um, to make sure that there's no way I can cross wires or touch wires or anything. I had the boots already on, 
with the wires when I put each one on. So I'm putting on the final wire here on the lithium. Um, in this system, I have uh, fuse protectors built right into the ends, or you can connect them right to the ends. Uh, every lithium battery has to be fused on the positive side. And of course, every wire has to be the exact same length. So make sure you get the, uh, the lengths right the first time. So installing it, here we go. I've got little holes in the top uh, so it fits over. There's another protective on top with another nipple on top of the fuse. So I cut a hole around so it fits a little further down onto the terminal on each one of these. Okay, so now to connect the AGM battery and then uh, we'll turn it on and put some solar into it. AGM is your uh, capacitor, so AGM is what protects your lithium batteries um, from alternators when you don't have external alternators. So in our standard Volvo setup, uh, the regulators are internal to them, and what will happen is they'll just keep cycling full right through because lithium will take as much as they can get, and you'll end up burning out your alternators. So this is essentially protection here. We have a shutoff down below, the Cerex, that uh, shuts off um, the flow through to the batteries, the current, uh, when the batteries are full charge. That's a good sign. Blue. So we've had our lithium system in for about a week and a half now. So a uh, quick summary of how it's going. Um, actually overall really impressed uh, with the battery bank now there's a lot of talk that when you talk to the people and when you talk to other people about battery banks they're always uh, bigger is better uh, what we found so far with 800 amps is that uh, during the day with pretty good solar we're still not bringing the battery up to full so we're using about 350 amps uh, overnight of battery so which is bringing down to like 55 60 percent so when I went back and forth for quite a while of whether I go with 1,000, 1,200, how big is your battery bank? Um, what I really found is that it really is based on how much solar and other power you have to be able to recharge that battery bank every day. So I think right now we seem really well sized for our boat. Um, and now we're just working out a few final kinks uh, in the battery protect side of it um, that is still not reading properly. So. I still have a little bit of work to do, but overall, um, really happy with it right now.